Welcome to today's video and there's some very interesting new information come to light that I wasn't aware of and it's come from the COVID symptom tracker app, the King's College app, Zoe uh, app collaboration run by Professor uh, Tim Spector. Now we already know that the classic features of COVID-19 are fever, cough and loss of smell. But this study is saying that a rash should be added to that as the fourth feature. Now, of course, there are other clinical features that can be present or not. You know, the, 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 uh, the headache, the, the muscle pain, the joint pain, the undue fatigue, the sore throat, the sometimes diarrhea and vomiting. These other features can be there. But the classic features that are present most often are the fever, the cough and the loss of smell. And now they're saying that a rash should be added to that. So interesting. Let's look at that. We were, I was vaguely aware of this from severe cases, but this is showing how prevalent this is in the community. So interesting new work uh, from uh, Tim Spector's group here. So skin rash should be considered as a fourth key sign. A fourth key sign after the fever, the uh, cough and the, the anosmia, the loss of smell. Now, rashes have been reported in China and Europe in hospitalised patients, in sick patients. So we're aware that the poorliest patients could get this because that was reported from hospital data. But I wasn't aware that this can be a, a more minor feature, if you like, in the community. And this is the first study to systematically gather data about skin rashes in milder cases and in the wider population. And as we'll see in cases where skin rash is the only fever. But even though skin rash is the only fever, it still means the patient has the infection, therefore can still be infectious. So we could have been missing some patients thinking they were asymptomatic. Well, in actual fact, we missed the rash before. Now, this is uh, viral rashes here. This, this, this doctor here is one of the consultant dermatologists uh, on the study. And uh, she, she, she's saying this. Um, Many infections can affect the skin, obviously. Th th these are systemic infections. You're ill all over. The skin can be considered as the largest organ in the body in terms of mass, certainly. So it's not surprising that the skin's infected in systemic infection. So it's not surprising we're seeing these rashes in COVID-19 because it's a viral infection. However, it's important that people know that in some cases a rash may be the first and only symptom of the disease. Well, I, I, I wasn't aware of this, so it can be the first symptom. Previously, we thought that loss of smell can be the first symptom or the fever could be the first symptom. But no, this is saying the rash can be the rash can be the first symptom and sometimes the only symptom of the disease. So someone could have had a rash in the past, not realised they had COVID-19, have gone round about spreading the disease, giving it to people who became critically ill and potentially died because we did not have this index of suspicion, this high index of suspicion that a rash is a clinical feature of COVID-19 or can be. So this consultant dermatologist is saying, <clears throat> if you notice a new rash, you should take it seriously by self-isolating and getting tested as soon as possible. So the new rash should be considered alongside fever, cough and uh, loss of smell as a potential first feature of COVID-19 disease. So this is new, interesting and on a global scale could be remarkably helpful at curtailing the spread of the infection. Now, this study is based on 336,000 regular app users regular app users in fact i haven't done mine today so i think i'll probably just uh probably just do mine now so here we have the uh, covid symptom uh, tracker app hopefully you can see that covid symptom tracker app that comes up um report today if, even if you're feeling well so you report even if you're feeling well or not uh, this is me uh, last report was yesterday, so I'll report in today. Uh, that's actually asking us for some extra information, which it sometimes does, so I'll skip that because I'm on this demonstration. Then it asks you if you've had a COVID-19 test. 
so I've never had a COVID-19 test, then I feel physically normal. And that is it. That's it. That's me reported in for the day. Now, sometimes they ask additional questions and I, I will go back and um, I, I will go back and answer those. But for most days, for nine, 19 days out of 20, that's all you do. You just report in like that. It's not a geolocation. It's not Orwellian. It's just collecting really useful data. So I'd really encourage everyone to do that. So this is based on over a third of a million. Now, 8.8 .8 of people reporting a positive swab test had experienced a rash as part of their symptoms. So 8.8% .8 of people that turned out to be positive, when you asked them, they had had a rash at some point in the illness. Quite a significant chunk. So this means we could have been missing 8.8% .8 of people with this as an early feature who could have carried on spreading the infection. Quite, quite a significant finding. If you think of 8.8% .8 of the world's population, this is actually quite a massive, significant finding. Um, also, a rash reported in a further 8.2% of users with cough, fever and anosmia. So in other words, um, people that it looked clinically like they had COVID-19, but didn't actually get tested, but had the cough, the fever or the loss of smell. So clinically, it looked like they had COVID-19. There was another 8.2% also had a rash. So that means that uh, I think a quick calculation there is about 17%, isn't it? Um, uh, yeah, 16, yeah, 17%. So 17% of people with COVID-19, a rash is part of the clinical features according to this study. But this is highly likely to be valid because it's based on over a third of a million users. That is a big study. This is impressive, uh, impressive data, actually. This is fairly big data. So this looks like it's pretty well being missed <laughs> since January. Now, of course, some people had a rash who then tested negative, but that was 5.4%. So 5.4% of people with a negative test result also had a rash. But of course, that means there's a big difference between 5.4 and 17%. Or 54 and 8.8%. And with these kind of numbers, that is a very significant difference. All the statistical tests will come up with a p-value of 0 0.00001 or something like that, because this is such a large sample size. So, looks like the world has been missing a trick. Here. Now, to investigate further, uh, Tim Spector's group took it further and they collected images and information from 12,000 patients. So just take a picture of the rash on your phone, send it into the group. How hard is it? 17% of respondents tested positive for the coronavirus reported a rash in the first as the first symptom of the disease. So that's about what we worked out, wasn't it? <laughs> With my uh, impromptu adding up. <laughs> 17% of respondents testing positive for coronavirus reported a rash. So of all the people that tested positive, they asked them all and said, look, just, just, just think back. Did you have a rash? And 17% realised, oh, yeah, I did have a rash. 17% reported a rash as the first symptom of the disease. So getting on for one in five, isn't it? You know, has a rash as the first symptoms of the disease. 21% of those confirmed as being affected with coronavirus, the rash was their only symptom. Wow. So 21% of people confirmed as being infected with COVID-19, the rash was the only symptom. So this large percentage of people we described, previously described as being asymptomatic in that they didn't feel ill, maybe they weren't asymptomatic. Maybe they'd had a symptom which was a, a rash technically it's a, a sign but um, a sign is something you see a rash is something the patient feels a symptom is something the patient feels so technically it's a sign but never mind but anyway 21% of those confirmed as being infected with coronavirus the rash was their only symptom but of course these people would be infectious they could be spreading it on to other people they would be part of the chain of infection 
passing that on to someone else who could potentially get very sick, maybe critical, and who could potentially die as a result of the infection. Quite, quite possible, quite, quite, quite a rational sequence of events. So that, that, that's really quite a startling finding. I'm still kind of reeling at that. 21% of being, 21% uh, of people being uh, positive. The rash was their uh, only symptom. Yep, right, useful stuff. Now, um, that's kind of the bottom line, really, of this video, that there is a bit of conclusion later on. Um, so what I want to do now is tell you a little bit about uh, rashes and what they mean and, and uh, the relevance of rashes to, to this study. Now, in this study, there was basically three uh, types of rash reported, three types of rash. And the first were hive type rashes or urticaria. Now, hives or uh, urticaria actually literally means nettle rash. That, that's really what it means. And these are raised red patches on the skin, like a nettle rash or red spots. So sometimes it's kind of an all over red rash. Sometimes it's little spots with white bits in between. And it's called urticaria. And uh, th these are quite common as well in allergic reactions. I commonly treat them with uh, antihistamines. It's kind of a routine, it's kind of a routine treatment to treat these things if, if they're persistent and annoying with antihistamines. So they're raised bumps on the skin, which come and go quite quickly within a few hours and are usually very itchy. So I'm, I'm sure most of you have had a nettle rash. That's what it's like, urticarial hives, these raised red patches. And when you feel them, they're kind of lumpy because they're, they're inflamed and they're red. Can involve any part of the body. Often starts with itching on the palms or the soles of the feet. Now that's interesting. I haven't heard that one before. So itching on the palms of the hands or the soles of the feet. And then the rash can appear on other parts of the body. Can cause swelling of the lips and eyelids. And again, this is just classic of what, what, what we would normally call a histamine type reaction that we well, get this in hay fever, don't you, with swelling of the uh, of the uh, eyelids and sore, sore eyes. But swelling of the lips and the eyelids, again, been reported many times in COVID-19. These rashes can present quite early on in the infection. Very often they go away, but they can persist. Uh, they, they can also last a long time after the initial presentation. So sometimes they come and go, other times they hang around. So that was uh, that was that type of rash. Now, the next type of rash is uh, the prickly heat or the, the prickly heat or the um, chicken pox type rash. Now, this is a bit complicated here because it's, it's in kind of medical language. Erythro, erythromato or anything with erythro in means red. So like the erythrocytes are the red blood cells. So erythromato papula. Now, papula means it's a solid elevation, like a little lump. So it's a solid little lump. That's what a papula is. So the solid little lumps that are red, that's, what, that's all erythromatopapula means. So red and uh, lumpy, papula, erythropapula uh, rash. Or it can be erythrovesicular. So again, erythro means red and vesicular means that the rash has got fluid associated with it. So there's little fluids, like, 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 like tiny little fluidy things. If it becomes bigger, we'd call these blisters if it was bigger. And it says they're chicken pox, chicken pox type rashes. And this is true. So typically in the early stages of chicken pox, which of course you see all the time in kids, it's a rethro papula. You get these reddish, uh, hardish lumps on the surface of the skin. Then over time, it become, they become fluid filled. They become erythrovesicular. So that means red and raised lumpy. That means red and uh, fluidy inside, like a little blister. That's all those terms mean. So you can get both of those. Uh, areas of small itchy bumps that can occur anywhere on the body in COVID-19. But particularly, these rashes occur on the elbows and knees, backs of the hands and feet. Now, I've never quite worked out why particular rashes appear on particular parts of the body. 
Um, but uh, that, that's where the commas are. Elbows, knees, backs of the hands and feet. And this rash can persist for days or weeks. Interesting. So a longer, a longer living, uh, longer lasting rash. So that's the second sort. And the third presentation in COVID-19 is called COVID fingers and toes. And these are like chillblains. Now, chillblains are really quite common. Typically, they're caused by exposure to the cold. Now, not everyone gets them. So one person might get exposed to a certain amount of cold and have cold feet. Another person might be exposed to a certain amount of cold and get them. One person doesn't get them. One person does get them. But what it is, it's a painful inflammation of the small blood vessels on exposure to cold. And it can lead to blistering. So you tend to get red fingers, uh, inflamed fingers. More, most times I've seen it on the toes because feet tend to get the coldest. So you get these, uh, you get these red inflamed toes. Typically it's itchy, typically it's painful and they can blister. Chill blame. So some people are particularly prone to it. Of course, it's important for those people to keep their feet warm. So chillblains, again, see this all the time. Um, re reddish or purplish lumps on the fingers or toes, which we see, yep, common finding. Now, typically chillblains, most of the patients that have complained to me about chillblains, um, they say it's itchy. But in COVID-19, it's saying maybe sore, so they may be quite painful, so sore chillblains, but they're saying usually not itchy. So a little unusual if it's not usually itchy, but there you go. That's what that's what the finding is. This type of rash is most specific to COVID-19. So in other words, the urticarial rash and this, these sort of erythropapular and erythrovesicular rashes can occur in other conditions. But uh, the chillblain rash is the most specific to COVID-19. So in a sense, this is the most useful diagnostic rash. And we've known about this for a while. Again, most, most commonly I've heard about it in patients that are severely ill because they're the ones that have come to the attention of the researchers. But this COVID fingers and toes. So it's inflammation of the, the blood vessels in the fingers and toes, making the fingers and toes red and, and making them not so much itchy, but, but sore. More common in younger people and tends to present later on in the illness. So whereas the um, urticarial rash or the prickly heat type rash um, tended to be early features, this tends to be a later feature. So they're the three types of rashes. And just a little bit about what this means. One of the other consultant dermatologists, uh, Dr. Kluke, um, involved in this study, uh, she says this, um, these findings highlight the importance of keeping an eye on any new changes in your skin, such as lumps, bumps, or rashes. Now, she's put it much simpler than me, hasn't she? Lumps, bumps, or rashes. Early reporting of COVID-associated uh, rashes by members of the public and recognition of their significance by frontline healthcare practitioners is important. So, in other words, the public needs to be aware of this as a potential clinical feature of COVID-19 and anyone assessing these patients needs to be aware that a rash on its own even without any other symptoms at all as we saw 21% of people who tested positive the rash was the only clinical feature so worldwide this is of just massive importance massive importance may increase the detection of coronavirus infection and stop the spread absolutely Otherwise, people might not know they've had it because they might not realise the rash is COVID-19. So that was another one of the consultant dermatologists involved in the study and research. And um, finally, um, th this doctor here is the, is the president of the British Association of Dermatologists. So these are, these are big cheeses now in dermatology. And uh, she's saying this. Uh, documenting the skin symptoms associated with COVID-19 is an important piece of the puzzle in building, an understand, uh, building our understanding of the disease. So obviously the, uh, the boffins here have got more thoughts on this. It's helping them to understand the disease altogether, <clears throat> as well as helping us to recognise it early and isolate people. Uh, she goes on to say, this is actually speaking for the British Association of Dermatologists here. 
Skin symptoms may play a crucial role <coughs> in detecting infection in people <coughs> excuse me, who are otherwise asymptomatic. 21%. Otherwise asymptomatic. So skin symptoms may play a crucial role in detecting the infection in people who are otherwise asymptomatic. Now, th 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 this, on a global scale, has got the potential to prevent tens of millions of infections. This is... Um, now, if you think of 21% of the people in a country who could be infectious, but who we can isolate, then that, that means to me that we could be reducing the drivers of transmission by 21% simply by recognising these rashes and isolating people with these rashes. And we get 21% less spread of infection. This is massively important. Um, we're delighted to be working with the team at King's College London to make an image library of COVID-19 skin manifestations. Now, I'm not sure where I stand with copyright, but I have included a link at the top of this where you can look at all the pictures for yourself. Um, so th th they're, they're uh, available. Um, this will help healthcare professionals guide their decision-making in clinical settings, of course, and alert members of the public. I may have a role in educating the public about skin symptoms, which would warrant self-isolation. So there we go. I think that's a remarkably important uh, study. Very important study. Um, excellent useful information. People with mild or no symptoms can have the skin rash and therefore can identify themselves or be identified as people that are infected with COVID-19.